next, let's take a look on section 7, subsections 1C. What are the terms and conditions? Okay guys, for section 7, subsection 1C, there are two conditions that you must fulfill. So conditions number one, if you guys look at here is, make sure in the current year, okay, the taxpayer needs to stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days or more. Okay, so when you guys give reason, I want you to give reason like this. Stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days. So the minimum number of days under C is 90. Uh, 90. How about 89 guys? No, 89 no. Because the minimum it must be 90 or most. This is conditions number 1. Okay, condition number 2, you must fulfill. This one is N. Uh, N. Alright, stay in Malaysia at least 90 days and 3 out of 4. What does it mean by 3 out of 4? You have 4 options. So, you have 4 options. 4 options meaning to say you have 4 years. For example, uh, 20, 22, 20, 23, 20, 24, and then 20, 25. Uh, this is what it means. Alright? 3 out of 4 immediate preceding YE. Immediate preceding YE meaning to say, let's say, we would like to determine resident status for YA 2026. Okay, so 3 out of 4 immediate preceding YA starting from, it must start from 2025. Immediate means you cannot skip. So 2025 is option number 1. 2024 is option number 2. 2023 is option number 3. And 2022 is option number 4. Uh, this is what it means. 3 out of 4. You only need to fulfill 3. Any 3 from option number 1 until option number 4. Okay. So what you need to choose is or either. This one you are given option. Either that particular year is a resident. The status is resident. Let's say the status is not resident, it's okay because your option, make sure that number of days stay in Malaysia is at least 90 or more. Uh, so you should choose among one of two. Alright, so I repeat again, what are the conditions under C? They are two and you must fulfill both. Number one, in the current year, for example, in this case, current year is 2026, right? Okay, make sure that the taxpayer stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days. Condition number two and three out of four immediate preceding years are either, choose one, resident, if not resident, let's say the status is an R, it's okay, look at the number of days. Uh, if the number of days is at least 90 or more, we can accept that. Okay, let me show you guys example. Okay, example guys, I would like to do March 2024. Okay, this is the questions. March 2024, so far I already discussed 2018, uh, 2019, isn't it? Okay, now I would like to show you guys C. So for C, we need to look at YA 2021. So, YA 2021, guys. Okay, let's take a look on this question. This is YA 2021. Okay, we have notes number two. Let's settle our notes first. So, note number two. Telco Sendian Berhad sent Joe Jonas to attend Telco exhibition in Singapore from 1st September until 5th September. So, guys, why Jonas went to Singapore? Not for leisure, but company sent him back to attend exhibition. Isn't it? So this one related to his work. So related to his work, confirm this is temporary absence. Okay. Alright, so let's record note number uh, YA 2021. Okay, what do we have here? So this one starting from 1st May until 31st August. So record here. Followed by note number 2, this is TA. TA needs to be recorded 1st September until 5th September. Okay, let's compute number of day, guys. Okay, first May, starting from May. So, May 31. Okay, May 31. Okay, plus June 30. 
last July 31 plus August 31. Alright, okay, so you guys should get 1, 2, 3. How about our TA guys? TA 5 days. Uh, don't forget to put TA in bracket. Alright, so next one guys, next. Okay, total up number of days. Remember guys, I can see they are, there is a TA there, isn't it? So when there is a TA there guys, be careful. Do not add TA when you compute number of days. Because TA can only be added when you do B. We are not doing B. So right now, how many days? 123 days. Okay, as usual guys, let's try to use A. So A, you need to state initial 182. But very obvious, this is less, one, less than 182. How about B guys, Limbai? Okay, Limbai, before we cross over, we go backward to 2020. Condition number one in 2021 is you must have at least one day in January. You don't even have January. Skip Limbai. How about Ling2? Okay, Ling2, we need help from next year. So before we cross over to the next year, condition in 2021, you must have at least one day in December 2021. And we don't even have December, isn't it? So now, let's try C. Okay, I already mentioned there are two uh, conditions for C, isn't it guys? Okay, condition number one. In current year 2021, stay in at least 90 days. Look at number of days. More than 90, right? So first condition, satisfied. Condition number two. Three out of four immediate preceding years are also resident or stay in Malaysia at least 90 days. So, three out of four. So, here guys, you only have how many years? 2021, 2019, 2, 2018, 3. We don't have 2017, right? It's okay because we only need three. Three out of four. Since you don't have four options, three options you must fulfill. Ah, okay. Alright, look at 2020. So, 2020, is it resident? Yes, we got one. 2019, is it resident? Yes, we got two. 2018, is it resident? Yes, we got three. So, do we feel free to see, guys? Definitely is yes. That's why 2021, the status is resident. Section 7, subsection 1C. How do we give reason? Exactly the definition. Stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days. And 3 out of 4 immediate preceding years. So what were the YA just now? 2020, 2019 and 2018. Or either resident or stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days. Uh, so this is how you answer for C. Hopefully you can, you can see. Alright? Next, okay, we go to the next part. This is section 7, subsection 1D. Okay, exactly like section 7, subsection 1C. Okay, D, we also have two conditions need to be fulfilled. So, what are the conditions? Okay, guys, the condition number one. Next year must be resident. So, this is condition number one, eh? Next year must be resident. So, he must be resident in the following year. To make it simple, next year, the taxpayer is resident. Guys, it doesn't make sense. Like, how do we know, uh, let's say this year, how do we know next year whether we're still alive or not? How do we know next year we, whether we are going to stay in Malaysia or not? It doesn't make sense, isn't it? That's why IRB said that Section 7, Section 1 this is just a deeming provision. So, meaning to say we don't know what will happen next year, right? So, that's why next year, in case actually the real number of stay you were not in Malaysia, therefore, you need to revise your tax residence status later. Uh, meaning to say when you apply Section 7, Section 1D, you based on the concept of we assume. Uh, we assume. If your assumption is wrong, then it is your responsibility to revise back your Tax resident status. You need to inform IRB. Okay, so this is condition number one. Okay, condition number two. Three immediate preceding YAs must also be resident. Guys, if you compare C and D, 
option for C, three out of four. And then you are given option either resident or state emission entities, right? But for D, you have no option. Three immediate preceding YA must be resident. You don't have an option like C. Ah, okay. So these are two condition for D. Okay, next one, guys. I would like to summarize D. So in case if you didn't notice when I explained previous slide, guys, two condition for D, I did not mention anything about current year. How many days you need to stay in the current year? Isn't it? Because under section 7, subsection 1D, guys, there is no need to stay in Malaysia at all for particular for the current year. Because condition next year, and then three immediate preceding year. Isn't it? IRB does not mention anything about current year, how many days you need to stay in Malaysia. That's why if you are given question, and then the question mentioned that the taxpayer was not in Malaysia at all in that particular year, automatically you know the answer. You cannot use A, you cannot use B, you cannot use C, but you can always try D. Alright? Okay. I guess that's all under section 7, subsection 1D. Okay, let me show you guys example. I am using question March 2024. Alright, guys, for question March 2024, I finished discuss 2018, 19, 20, and 21. Isn't it? Because uh, section 7, section 1C, I use March 2024. Guys, next, let's proceed from 2022 and also 2023. Let's do the remaining YA. Ah, okay, guys. 2022, first March until 12 April. So, first March until 12 April. So, when you compute number of days, okay, March is 31, April until 12 days. So, you will get 43 days. Isn't it? Okay, 43 days, guys. Let's try to use A. Very obvious, no A. A182. How about B Limbai? Limbai, we need January in 2022. No January, skip Limbai. How about Lin2? Lin2, we need at least one day in December 22. No December at all, skip Lin2. How about C, guys? C, you need to stay in Malaysia at least 90 days, and this one less than 90. So, you cannot use A, B, and C. Let's try D. Let's try D, Eman. Okay, what is D? Just now, you know that condition for D, next year must be resident. Isn't it? Okay, next year must be resident. Okay, let's do it for next year. Uh, let's do next year, guys. Okay, next year, 2023, right? Okay, so you enter period of stay first. Okay, you record period of stay. First March to 31st May. Okay, calculate number of days. March is 31, April is 30, May until 31. So, total number of days is 92. Okay, let's try to use A. No A, not enough 1A2. How about B link by? There is no January, right? Okay, how about link 2? There is no December. Okay, how about C? Let's try C. Okay, C, number one, condition number for C is stay in Malaysia at least 90 days. Yes, 90 days. This is more than 90. Okay, condition number one is satisfied. Okay, condition number two. Three out of four immediate preceding years are either resident or stay in Malaysia at least 90 days. Okay, let's start with, okay, three out of four immediate preceding years. Okay, let's start with 2022. This is option number one. Guys, option number one, okay, look at our status. Do we know yet the status? Not yet. Not yet. We don't know the status yet. But you have option for C. Look at number of days. Is it at least 90? No. So skip 2022. But we still have another three options. Isn't it? Okay, how about option number two? Option number two is 2021. Is it resident? Yes, we got one. Option number three is 2020. Resident? Yes, we got two. Last option number four, 2019. Also resident, right? That's why 2023, our answer is resident under section seven, subsection 1C. 
So how do we give reason? Stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days. Normally this one one tick. Three out of four immediate procedures. What were the YA just now? 21, 2020 and 2019, right? Okay, all either residents or stay in Malaysia at least 90 days. Okay, so now we have done with 2023. Guys, why did we do 2023 just now? Because we were trying to use D for 2022. Isn't it? Okay, now go back to our 2022. So 2022, everyone, condition to use D. Next year must be resident. Okay, look at 2020. Is it resident, guys? Yes, resident. Ah, D resident. Okay, condition number two. Three immediate procedures are also resident. You cannot skip it, guys. Eh? So three immediate start from 2021. Is it resident? Yes. 2020, is it resident? Yes. 2019, is it resident? Yes. So, three immediate preceding years are also resident, right? That's why 2022, the answer is resident. Under section 7, subsection 1D. How do you give reason? Next year is a resident. So, mention next year is YA 2023. And three immediate preceding year. So, what were the YA 21, 20, 2019? Are also resident. Ah, okay. So I've done discussing March 2024. Okay, I have showed you guys how to do for A, B, C, and also D. So hopefully you guys can get uh, a little bit idea about how to answer for resident status. Okay, guys. Uh, besides section seven, uh, subsection one A until D. We also have another one important section under the topic of resident status for individual. So this is what we call as section 7, subsections 1 capital B. Guys, this is not same as section 7, subsection 1B. Uh, this one is linked to any by. No, 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 no. This is totally different, guys. This is section 7, subsection 1 capital B. So, what is section 7, subsection 1, capital B, guys? This one, specific, special, only for those who are working for the government. Uh, those who are working in public service or statutory authority. So, this section cannot be applied if you are working for private sector. Okay, let me show you guys the detail of section 7, subsections 1, capital B. Okay, this one guys. Condition number one is make sure that the taxpayer is a Malaysian citizen. Ah, Malaysian citizen. This is condition number one under section 7, subsection 1, capital B. Alright. And then condition number two. Make sure that the person or the taxpayer is employed in the public services. We need to say government agency. Or service of statutory authority in Malaysia. Any government agencies in Malaysia. So this is very important. That's why I said just now guys. This section cannot be applied to private sector. Because condition number two. Make sure he or she is working for the government. Or any government agencies in Malaysia. Alright. And then number three. The reason the taxpayer is not in Malaysia. There are two reasons. So, it could be one of these two. So, number one, the person is having or exercising his employment outside Malaysia. Normally, this one refers to those who are working outside Malaysia as Malaysian ambassador. Ah, Normally, we have ambassador in all countries in the world, isn't it? Uh, Malaysian ambassador in Indonesia, uh, Malaysian ambassador in Arab Saudi, in Thailand, in UK, in US, in Vietnam. So when you become ambassador for Malaysia, guys, you are not staying in Malaysia. You are going to stay in that particular country, isn't it? Meaning to say the whole year you are not in Malaysia. So this is reason number one. So whenever you see the questions, uh, Malaysian citizen, okay, working for the government and then sent to the overseas because of 
uh, booking as an ambassador, okay, or representative of Malaysia, guys, automatically you must give me reason number one. Uh, he is stay. Uh, he is absent from Malaysia due to exercising his employment outside Malaysia. Or reason number two, not because of exercising employment outside Malaysia, but more towards further study. Okay, further study. Alright guys, for this study, it could be in any institution or professional body outside Malaysia. But for this study guys, we have one additional condition. Alright, one additional condition which is when the taxpayer further his study outside Malaysia. And it must be fully sponsored by the government. Uh, fully sponsored, it could be that government pay 100% for any fees, only any cost fees, or he receives scholarship from the government. Alright, no point if the taxpayer is Malaysian citizen, working for the government, for this study of submission, but not receiving any sponsorship from the government. So still, you cannot apply Section 7, Section 1, Capital B. Because for further study, we have additional condition, which is make sure that the cost is fully sponsored by the government. Government. Uh, this is very important. Okay, guys. Let me show you guys example. Uh, this is example number one. I took it from public ruling. Okay. Look at here. Uh, Iqmal, he is a Malaysian ambassador. For to the USA had the following period of stay in Malaysia or USA. Ah, guys, look at 2016. I would like to highlight 2016. 2016, he was not in Malaysia at all. Alright, whereby he was in USA 2017. Also, he was not in Malaysia. Uh, most of the time, he was in USA because he is working there as an ambassador. Isn't it? So, what does it mean by 2016 and 17? So, what happened to him? What is his status? So, his status for these two years, guys, automatic become resident. Automatic become resident under Section 7, Subsection 1, Capital B. Why? Because, number one, he is Malaysian citizen. And then, uh, is employed in public services in Malaysia because he is working as an Malaysian ambassador in USA. And then, he is absent from Malaysia because of what? Exercising his employment outside Malaysia. By virtue of his employment, which is requires him to carry out his duty overseas. Ah, see that you cannot say that. Oh, uh, Iqmal absent from Malaysia, so he is a non-resident. Wrong, wrong. So in this case, your answer is wrong because he is working for the government. Automatic his status, guys, resident under Section Seven, Subsection One, Capital B. Example number two, guys. Uh, this is about a uh, further study at overseas. Uh, this one also, I took it directly from public ruling. Okay, let, let's read the questions together. Yeah? Okay, this is Imran. He is an officer uh, with the Ministry of Tourism. This is government. Went on study leave to pursue MBA in UK. Okay, this is very important. So, first, he is Malaysian citizen, uh, working for the government, and then further study in overseas. Okay, guys, we need one more. If further study at overseas, right? Which is, he was sponsored by the government of Malaysia. So, guys, Imran, he fulfilled all the conditions, isn't it? Uh, that's why... For the period he was in UK to further his study, automatic his status will become resident. Under Section 7, Subsection 1, Capital B. Let me show you guys what happens if you are not government servant. Ah, so example number 3, this one specific for a non-government servant. Okay, look at here. Elizabeth Yeo. Malaysian citizen. Okay, fine. She is Malaysian citizen. However, she worked in multinational company in Kuala Lumpur. This is not government, guy. Not government. Okay. After working for a few years, 
she obtained full sponsorship from her employer. Okay, she got full sponsorship, maksudnya fully sponsored, to pursue bachelor degree course in Australia. Guys, does she fulfill all the condition or not? So, what went wrong in this example, guys? Which condition she did not fulfill? Condition number two. Ah, even though she is Malaysian citizen, okay, but she is not working for the government. So what happened, guys? Okay, the period she was absent from Malaysia, guys, she is not entitled to get resident under Section Seven, Subsection One, Capital B. This section cannot be applied for Elizabeth Yeo because she is not working for the government. Uh, so, I hope you guys can differentiate between example number 2 and also example number 3. Okay, last one guys. Last one. Okay, I would like to explain to you guys second man. Have you ever heard about second man? Obviously, no. Isn't it? Because we do have uh, questions asked students about second man. And mostly students confused. They thought that second man is temporary absent obviously no guys no 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 second month is not temporary absent okay all right let me explain to you what is second month second month is a temporary transfer it is temporary not permanently of an employee to another position or employment meaning to say guys let's say okay let's say this is a Okay, A is working for company uh, A, B, C, uh, Sendirian Berhad. Okay, A, B, C, Sendirian Berhad has 10 branches in the world. Let's say uh, in Thailand, in China, in Korea, in Japan. So what happened is, okay, company send A to branch in Thailand for two years. Ah, so what happened for the period of two years? Is it related to temporary absent category number one? The answer, guys, no. No, definitely no. Ah, second month is not temporary absent under category number one. Alright, normally, what is the purpose? Why company do this? Company just simply transfer employee from one country to another country. Why? What's the reason? Okay, the reason is, to increase the number of employees. Maybe uh, the branch in Thailand, uh, they don't have enough employee. Branch in Malaysia, they have uh, more employee, the excess of employees. So they just simply transfer employee from uh, branch in Malaysia to branch in Thailand. Okay, number two, to replace other employees. Okay, to exchange experience or skill. Okay, let's say that you are experienced officer in that company. Okay, and then other branches need your expertise. So the company send you to the other branches to teach them, to teach the staff there. Uh, so after you have taught them enough, okay, you will come back to Malaysia. Something like that. Ah, okay, that's why guys. Second month is not considered as TA, but you are considered as being absent from Malaysia during the period of second month. Uh, this one you guys can see uh, some of the example of question uh, are February 2021 and also March 2022. Uh, you can try out that questions. It is very interesting, guys. Second month. Okay. Last but not least, guys, this is the summary that I have provided to you guys on how to answer for your passing exam and also common test questions. Okay, let me show you guys. For example, okay, look at here. Uh, under section 7, subsection 1A, the way you give your reason is stay in Malaysia for at least 182 days. Do not use the wrong term, more than. More than meaning to you exclude 182. You start from 183. This is wrong. Okay. Section 7, Section 1B, we have two, link 2 and link bind, isn't it? The way you give reason is same, except you change link 2 and link bind. That's it. So, the way you give reason, stay in Malaysia less than 182 days. Do not give me stay in Malaysia at least 182. No. The correct term is less than. Okay. But, don't use the word and. But. 
the period is linked by. Link to, you just mentioned link to. And then make sure you state what is the YE. Okay. 482 days consecutively including TA. Make sure you have the word consecutively. Without the word consecutively, no marks. Okay. C. Stay in Malaysia for at least 90 days. Not more than 90 days. At least 90 days. And then the correct word is and, not but. And. Because there are two conditions for C. And. Three out of four. Don't say three. Three is wrong. Three out of four. Immediate preceding YA. Without the word immediate, your answer is wrong. If you say three out of four preceding, wrong. Three out of four immediate preceding YA. And then mention in bracket. Every time you mention YA, mention what is the YA. Or either. Either. This one not N eh? Either. Resident or not N. Or stay in Malaysia at least 90 days. Not more than 90 days. At least 90 days. Okay, last but not least, section 7, subsection 1B, uh, 1D. D, eh? Okay, next year is a resident. Every time we mention YA. Uh, mention YA. Next year, what is the YA? And, not all, and, and, three immediate preceding YA. So, every time we mention YA, state the YA. Guys, again, I would like to highlight the word immediate. Immediate, immediate. Both C and D, we have immediate. Immediate is very important keyword. Are also resident. Uh, are also resident. Alright? Okay, so make sure that you know how to give reason because reason will give you more marks compared to competition. Alright, so I guess uh, that's all for resident status. Uh, so if you have any question, uh, do not hesitate to ask me. Okay, so make sure that you listen to the lecture. Make sure that you understand uh, what is important, what are the conditions for section 7, section 1A until D and also section 7, subsection 1, capital B. Make sure that you also know what is second month, whether second month is entitled as temporary absent or not. So I guess that's all from me, everyone. Thank you.